Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Wade with Black Tie Barn Candle Company. Today we're gonna to be reviewing more candles sent in by another one of you subscribers, Ashley Elliott and her company, This Witch Candles. Really excited to get started here. If you've never seen one of these review videos before, I would encourage you to check out some of the others. I think we've got over 20 of them now in a playlist here on the channel. A little bit about how these work is they are sent in voluntarily. And the whole purpose of these is not to talk about right or wrong or which best materials to use and tell you what to do with your candles. Again, I have been in the industry a while and I've been running a candle business for a while, but that does not make me an expert on everything candle making. So the purpose is just to give you some feedback about what I am thinking when I'm checking out these candles, both how they look um, and then of course, uh, while I'm testing how they perform as well, tell you the things I really like about the candles and things that if they were mine, maybe I would work on tweaking or improving if I could. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Hopefully I can share some insight that might be helpful, but if nothing else, maybe it's a little entertaining and I hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks for being here as always. Right off the bat, you'll notice a couple envelopes here. Once again, if you've never seen these videos before, I'm often provided two envelopes. One is a before letter telling me things they wanna share up front. Then we'll check out the products. I make some guesses on some of the materials being used. And then the second envelope, second letter, is what we'll talk about at the end. And that tells me what they are using. And it's fun little game, little fact checking to see if I was right, wrong, how close I was. It just adds a little extra element to these videos. So I'm gonna go ahead and get everything out of the box. And then we're gonna talk about the visuals, make some guesses, talk about the materials, the labels, whatever is here. And then I will do some testing as well and let you know how that goes as well. All right, let's go ahead and get started. First and foremost, everything is in a box within a box, which is great. I'm not gonna have any issues with uh, shipping here safely. A very nicely done on the packaging. Like I said, we've got a couple letters, we've got a couple boxes, and they're packaged safely in the box. Let's start with this uh, intro letter first. I'm gonna read through this quickly and then I'll summarize anything that is okay to share. So basically what Ashley wanted to share is that it is a woman-owned company. They started in 2020. Uh, a lot of businesses started around that time because they were dealing with other issues around the world, obviously, and they were also looking for outlets or other ways to make side income. So very common time for a lot of people to get started. Uh, she is considering some rebranding here in the future. This is really kind of a, a kickstart thing she, she's done so far. Uh, testing different materials and products and, and current branding, but with some intentions to change or improve the branding as time goes on. Let's go ahead and set this letter aside. And this other letter is the materials reveal letter. And we will get back to this one after we're done testing and it will be done at the very end of the video. Before we go any further, just a reminder that everyone's at different stages of candle making, right? Some of us are running businesses for several years. Some are just starting and there's a lot of room in between as well. So keep that in mind reviewing videos. So many people in the comments will sometimes ask about where's this and this should be on the label and things like that. But just keep in mind that some people are just wanting feedback along the way. They're sending these in for review and some feedback while they're still tweaking and working on things. So not everything is sent as finished products. With that being said, Really love this little box here with this, uh, this stamp on it, this imprint on it. We're gonna start with that box. And open it up and this is, everything looks great so far. Great packaging, nice little thank you card. And inside the thank you card is their candle care and some more information of where you can find them on Etsy and Instagram, as well as a business card. Not sure what this is. Oh, that's fun. So this is a little, Dragon's Blood Wax Melt Sample. It's a little skull. So again, it's called This Witch Candles. So very good branded, very good theme. It smells really good. A lot of people don't like Dragon's Blood. It's, it's very polarizing. You either love it or hate it. Very incense -y. I've always kind of liked it. All right, really, really good packaging here. Expensive packaging, a lot of cost of goods is probably going into the presentation, but that's a lot sometimes. With some people's brands, it's all about not just the product, but presentation as well. So you just have to know that when you're going into it. Are you trying to do more of an economy type candle where it's all just about the candle and the fragrance and you wanna keep your price points lower? Or are you going for an entire mood, setting an entire feeling? Usually these niche-based businesses like this one really focus a lot on branding and packaging and presentation because it's all part of the experience. So this is, uh, looks like a little bag of wax melts. It's called the Graveyard, Apple Chai and Drunken Pumpkin. Oh, I can smell the apple chai through the bag. Oh man, that smells really, really good. That's the apple chai. I've, God, I've got a lot of apple spice scents and uh, a couple chais as well. Not that one though, that's really good. I really, really enjoy that fragrance. I really don't know what kind of wax we're working with here. It's, it's definitely got some soy, I can tell, but it's also got some of that paraffin kind of feel to and that sheen, a little bit of that smoothness. It's probably a parasoy blend of some type. 
Um, you know, a lot of people will use like a 6006, even for wax melts. It's it's awfully soft to use for wax melts. So it might not be that, but it is it is kind of soft, kind of greasy. So it could be, could be. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside. Okay, now we've got a standard clamshell package. So we've already got a lot of options here with the type of products we're using, right? We've had little individual wax melts. We had the bag sachet with more wax melts. We've got clamshell wax melts. I imagine these are candles in this other box. But even though we've got several products, everything has been very consistent, right? Everything has been branded. Everything feels like it's part of the same company. So very good job with brand consistency. This one's called Broomsticks and it is white birch and leather. Oh yeah, and the letter Ashley mentioned that she knows I like leather which I do. One of my favorite candles I sell is a leather candle. A lot of people don't like it, right? It's polarizing again. It smells like a boot shop, but I like it a lot. So, and it smells really good. Actually, it's, you definitely got the leather smell, right? But that white birch tones it down and softens it a little bit. So it's not as punchy leather right in the face as most other leather scents are. Just to try that one out as well. All right. Also, I don't spend a lot of time testing the, the wax melts for the video because they either just perform or they don't. I'll talk about the wax type a little bit. Like those, for me, were a little on the soft side. I like them to be a little bit more firm. But other than that, I'll just let you know if there's anything worth mentioning after I use them in the warmers. Uh, generally, it's just either they smelled good or didn't really smell them. So I will mention that if it's necessary, but otherwise, we're gonna spend most of the time here on the candles. All right, I know I've said this several times already, but outstanding job in the presentation. I know this takes a lot of time per order to, be, to do this. But if you're gonna do it, do it right. Like if you're gonna go this route, go all out and uh, really make the entire thing an experience. People will love opening products like this. There's just so much going on. It feels very personal and people really enjoy that. Now, yes, packaging like this, presentation like this will cost you much more. As a maker and as a business owner, it will cost you a lot more money to go this route. But you can also sell it for more. When you go with this type of presentation experience, you can charge more for your products. So it really does kind of balance out. So it's just a matter of which direction you want to go. Okay, so we got another card here, Wade Thomas and family. That's very sweet. So this was sent around Christmas. Obviously this video is posting much, much later than that, but very nice that they sent a, uh, a Christmas card along as well. And I apologize that some of these ended up getting posted much later than I anticipated. Things got crazy for me around the holidays with my own business. And then I got a new location to move to and things just got really out of hand. I was not expecting that. So thank you for your patience, not just you, Ashley, but really everyone else that uh, sent in products for review. So this is the holiday collection and it's got four small candles in it. Great presentation, great packaging. It's the only thing that really doesn't scream which candle brand like the others did. Everything looked fairly similar. This one obviously looks different, but it's for the holidays. It's a seasonal collection. So it's very common to look a little bit different. But overall, the presentation, the packaging it was in still was the exact same. Opening this up, we're gonna pull all of these little guys out. This is really cute little setup here. I'm assuming they're all using the same wax. They're the same size, probably the same wick. So I'm gonna briefly talk about uh, one of them as far as the looks, and then I'm gonna kind of tell you a little bit about each fragrance. And then when I go to test them, unless some of them are burning extremely different than the others, I'm not gonna break them all down individually because they're all gonna probably be very close, very similar if they're using the same materials. But again, if there's any exceptions to that, then I will certainly point that out. But generally speaking, we're gonna review these candles as a whole. This one's called the Cauldron of Candy Canes, Peppermint and Vanilla. So once again, it is still branded. It just looks a little different because it's seasonal. That's kind of unusual. I smell the peppermint, but it, I smell a little note of the vanilla too. So that is, uh, so normally you would think peppermint would be like the top note that you would smell first. But when I put this to my nose, first thing I smell is the sweet vanilla. And then I pick up some of that uh, peppermint. So this is a parasoil blend wax, it says. I don't know if it's the same wax we're using in the wax melts or not, but this one's called Crackling Yule Log. So this will be like a firewood burning smell. Yes, exactly. In fact, this one smells like, um, what's it called? Fire, maybe it is called firewood. Firewood or Fireside from Flaming Candle Company has a fragrance sort of like this. It smells exactly like that. Definitely has that campfire smell. And that has something really, really pungent about it. And it's very noticeable, it smells really good. I love fragrances like that, love it. And this is Cookies for St. Nicholas. Again, holiday collection, makes sense. This smells like your standard kind of sugar cookie or Christmas cookie fragrance. And then last but not least, we have Cookies for Krampus, which is a gingerbread. So this is, it is gingerbread, but it's almost, 
it almost has like a hint of coffee is what it smells like to me. I would not have thought cookies. Either way, it smells really good. My favorite of these is gonna be the firewood, the crackling yule log. Then I would go with the gingerbread, then the peppermint vanilla, and then the uh, cookies for St. Nicholas. I like that there's a cookies for St. Nicholas and a cookies for Krampus, that's, that's really fun. Uh, so great job on that. All right, Ashley, so far, the only suggestion I have so far on all of these, um, until we burn them and test them out, is if I take all these lids off here, is I would definitely trim the wick. Two of them are pretty good, maybe a little long, um, but these two, the wicks are definitely too long on them. Over a half inch each, they probably need to be cut in half. Um, so try to keep them all around a quarter inch. Uh, these ones could probably be okay. And honestly, you know, customers, some customers know to trim their wicks, but when they're this close, people might not know and they might just light them this way. So I would go ahead and trim the wicks to the quarter inch, roughly quarter inch on all your products before you sell them. But that's just my personal preference. But I do think that that is a good idea. I love the look, this little collection sampler kit. These are meant for small rooms, bathrooms, things like that, but depending on the wax and depending on the fragrance though, you might be able to use these in a small or medium sized room as well. I think the, everything looks great and you've got a lot going on here and you've done such a good job on the presentation. I'm gonna now test these and I'm gonna walk you through as I test it. I'm gonna tell you what I'm thinking and give my feedback while we're looking at the candles while they're burning. And then I will summarize here at the end of the video and give you my overall thoughts and feedback. Oh, real quick, before I forget, I need to tell you my thoughts and what we're using here. If I had to guess, I would say we're working with a IGI 6006 Parasoy for a couple of reasons. One, we know it's a Parasoy. So that already kind of rules out some straight paraffins and straight soys. Now there are a ton of Parasoy waxes. The reason I chose 6006 is I'm very familiar with that wax. I know what it looks like, especially when someone has hit the top with a heat gun. Uh, I, I know what, what that does. I know what that looks like with that wax. I also know that that is a very common popular wax for people just getting started. And it's a common wax for even people to continue using because it has such great hot throw. It does have its pros and cons like every other wax, but just looking at these candles, feeling the wax, that would definitely be my guess as far as the wax type. As far as the wicks go, I, I'm a little torn on the wicks. Uh, I'm torn between HTP and Eco wicks, but the paper threads that I'm seeing on some of these wicks are a little further apart than HTP wicks usually are, which makes me think they're Eco wicks. Uh, but it's really tough because when those wicks are large, it's much easier to see the differences and you can tell which is which. But when they're small sizes like this, it can be really hard to tell the difference. So and I'm gonna say probably like an Eco two for this jar. I don't know how that's gonna burn, we will see. Thanks for sticking around so far, let's get to testing and see how that goes. Okay, so we've done some testing here of the several products that Ashley sent in from the Switch Candles. And uh, we're gonna start with the wax melts real quick. And I told you in the first part of this video that I would only touch on this if there was really anything worth sharing because it's hard to do a lot of extensive testing and then discuss those results with wax melts on the channel uh, unless the entire video is focused on that. Um, and so there is only really one thing I want to mention. Oh, well, two things I want to mention about the wax melts. And there were various kinds. We had the, uh, the, the separate individual wax melts, like the shape of the skulls for the sample. And then uh, we had um, uh, an actual standard kind of clamshell wax melt. And first thing I want to share is that the hot throw on all of them was great. The fragrance on all of them was, a good, was very good. Uh, had no issues with performance. Um, the only thing I would suggest, and this is more personal preference than anything, but uh, with wax melts, I don't like them to be overly greasy or too soft. I want them to be very easy to use, user-friendly, I guess is one way to say it, where they crack and pop very easily. And then once you melt them and then uh, you want to pop them out of the, of, of the warmer, that it's very easy to do so. Now, a lot of people will pour the warm wax out of a melter or a tray uh, and discard it that way or soak it up with a cotton swab. I'm sorry, a, uh, a cotton ball and uh, dispose of it that way. And so if that's you, then this really doesn't matter as much. But the traditional way of using wax melts is once it would reharden, then you would just pop it out. And so you want a good, firm uh, wax melt consistency for that to happen. These for me were on the little bit of a soft side. I'll get to this in a minute, but I think the candles are, are IGI 6006. So my guess on the wax melts would be that she's using that with something else to firm it up a little bit because it's not as soft. As, uh, as your standard 6006 container wax. Uh, but I feel like it has some of that in it. So if I had to guess, I would say that mixed with something to harden it a little bit. 
So my only suggestion would be to increase the amount of that other wax that you're blending in to harden it up. But again, that's just personal preference, my own tips. Overall, the wax melts were really good. Let's go ahead and dive into the candles. As I'm discussing these candles, I'm going to mention a little bit of what I still think my belief on what we're using. Um, if you remember in the first part of the video, we had this uh, letter from Ashley, the uh, intro letter, which does not, does not talk about the materials. It's more about how she got started and why she's doing this, a little bit about herself and the business. Um, the second letter, which we haven't opened yet, this is the uh, Witch Candles Material Reveal letter. We'll get to that here in just a minute. Um, but my suspicion after using these candles is still that we're using IGI 6006. If I had to place a bet, on what wax, that's where I would put my money. Talk about the, the performance of each one real quick, and then I'm gonna circle back to wicking overall. And I'm gonna have a little bit of some video showing um, how the candles were burning and performing, but I'm basically gonna summarize that information for you. We're gonna, we, we reviewed four different fragrances. If you recall, this was a, a holiday themed collection. It was a cute little gift set. And again, I know this is a weird time of year to be reviewing a Christmas set, but uh, Ashley sent me these around the holidays, but she knew at the time that I was quite backed up on these. So uh, she knew I was gonna be getting to it later than I hoped. Um, but uh, yeah, so better late than never. And it's still good to get some feedback because she's gonna probably be doing something similar for this next season as well. So the first thing I wanna say is I love the theme and the branding and the, in the specific sense and the name she went with. As far as my personal favorite fragrance, I would have to go with Cracklin' Eulog, I think, and then I'd probably go with the Candy Canes. Um, and then the other two, the Cookies for Krampus and the Snickerdoodle, not so much my favorites, but I'm also not a big bakery fan or, or kind of sweet candle fan uh, in general. Ironically, the, the order in which they performed best matched my personal preference as well uh, for fragrance. So, the Cracklin' New Log I thought burned the best. It was the one that uh, it uh, at times looked like it might have been a little bit too big, but it, it overall just kind of was the best overall wicked candle. Uh, it it left a little bit of a hang up at first, and then it would catch up nicely. I thought that one performed the best overall. The uh, next one would have been the Candy Cane one. It did a pretty good job as well. Uh, it, there was times where the wick got a little large, and we're going to talk about wicking as as a whole here in a minute. But uh, overall, not too bad as well. The Cookies for Krampus one, uh, for me, was fairly overwicked. Uh, I could not get that one to be a good flame for the majority of the time. Uh, if I first trimmed it and the very first light um, and every trim in between was okay for a few minutes, but it would get pretty large pretty quickly. That could be a combination of the wick and the oil that was used. Uh, so it's it's hard to tell. And then same thing with the Snickerdoodle one. It wasn't as bad as the uh, the Cookies for Krampus one, but it was still a little bit overwicked for my taste as well. So from my experience, now candles can vary a little bit person to person and candle to candle, not so much in the process or the production of it, but how it performs because there's so many factors, right? There's uh, the wick might be in a slightly different location inside the jar. There might be a little bit of a variation in where the candle's burning. And so if one of them's near a vent, uh, you might get some drafts. If one of them's getting a near a large traffic area or high traffic area, you'll get some draft that way. If one candle's in a cooler area in the house versus a hotter, it might struggle to burn as much as the one that's in the warmer room, which could burn a little too quickly. There's a lot of factors. And so what, what, how a candle burned for me might be different than how it burns for you or someone else. But in my experience, in my testing, I would probably keep the crackly dew log to where it is right now. I may consider going down a size in the candy canes. I'm not entirely sure. You just have to test that one. And then I would probably go down a size, uh, a size or two in the other two fragrances, just personally. But let's talk about the wicking. So we'll find out for sure what materials we're using with both the wax and the wick, but I'm fairly confident it's 6006, and I'm also super confident we're using Eco Wicks. Eco Wicks for me are fairly easy to identify, and I've used them enough that I can usually tell the difference between those and similar cotton and paper wicks like CD or HDP. And so I, I would, be really shocked if we're not using eco wicks here. And the thing about eco wicks, which I've talked about in other videos, is uh, they can burn really, really good in certain applications, but other times the flame will get really tall and almost kind of smoky and sooty looking, even though you're not getting a, an excessively large melt pool. So you're, it, the flame looks over wicked, but the melt pool doesn't. And so uh, that's just a way, the way egos burn. They, they have tall flames. And, uh, and so, they can be a little tricky sometimes. Personally speaking, I do not like using Eco Wicks in IGI 6006. I know some candle suppliers 
recommend EcoWix for, for uh, 6006, but I think it's mostly because that's just one of the wicks that they sell. Uh, they're, they're often not going to recommend uh, wicks that they don't sell. So in my experience, I started with Eco Wicks with 6006 when I first started making candles 10 plus years ago or 12 or whatever it's been now. Um, and I found out quickly I did not like them for that wax. Now I use them in some other applications, but not with this wax. In my experience, I've liked Premier 700 Wicks, Zinc Wicks, sometimes LX Wicks, HTP Wicks. Uh, I, I find some other Wicks for me work a little bit better than Eco Wicks. What I like about the Eco Wicks though, is they are more rigid than your HTP Wicks or CE Wicks. So they will stay a little bit more in the center of your wax and your jar better than those, which I appreciate for sure. But I just don't necessarily like the way they perform and burn for me in that particular wax. 6006 also in general as a wax can be tricky to wick as well. It's got great hot throw, really good performance if you dial in the wick, but it can be tough to dial in the wick. Overall, I thought these burned really well. The hot throw, which is the last thing I want to mention, was incredible. A couple of these little guys pack a punch. I mean, the crackling Yule log was insane. Uh, that little candle I had in a, uh, a small room at first and it was overpowering. I'm like, geez, I got to put this in a bigger area. I ended up putting it in, in an open basement area, which filled up the entire basement plus upstairs. So this wax, especially if you have really good uh, performing wicks and fragrance oils, can just knock your socks off in terms of hot throws. So that is why it is a popular choice. Uh, but again, it all comes down to testing and patience and uh, and just working out a good process to make the best candle you can. And Ashley's done a really, really good job. I don't know how long she's been making candles, but she's come a long way already and uh, excellent work overall. Um, we're gonna get to this letter real quick just to see how close I was on my guesses or how far off. Sometimes I will admit that I'm just kind of shooting in the dark here, but in this particular case, I feel pretty confident with my with my guesses. So let's find out. All right, so um, the wax we're using is in fact IGI 6006, and the wicks are in fact Eco One wicks. So Eco One which is the smallest eco wick you can get <laughs> uh, is what she's using in these. And they're still a little too big in some of these jars. So my personal advice would be the jars that are a little over wicked, You might have to try a different wick type entirely. Um, zinc wicks work great in this wax. And a lot of people that have made uh, candles with this wax in the past for a, long, a number of years use zinc wicks still. However, uh, people are trying to get away from the zinc core because they don't want customers to think that they're bad. Customers still think that there's lead wicks and that's just not the case. Zinc core wicks have no problems whatsoever, but that, that small little wire, that core will still make people question what these wicks are. And so a lot of people have been trying to move away from those wicks. However, they perform really well, although they can have a tendency to mushroom still, uh, but they're great with hot throw and they're great with keeping a centered burn profile. But all in all, the wicks are pretty good. You might just want to experiment with a few other wick types for your candles that are giving you a little bit more of, a, of trouble. The wax melts is, is in fact a combination of 6006 with IGI 6028, which is used to firm up the consistency just a little bit. Ashley, thank you for sharing your information, sharing your process a little bit, as well as sharing your products for review here on the channel. I hope you appreciate the feedback and thank you so much for being patient, as well as everyone else that's still waiting on reviews for me. Um, I'm doing my best to get caught up and get through things, but it has been a hell of a couple years for me. So uh, yeah, it is what it is. Thank you all for being here. Please subscribe to the channel if you're interested in more videos about candle making or running a candle business. And as always, I thank you all for being here. I'll see you next time.